Chapter 23, Esker. Esker felt Balapan leap from her shoulder, but as she reached out with scrambling hands, they met with wooden bars ahead, around and behind. Esker gulped. They were locked inside a cage. She swung her skis down to grab her bow and heard Flint unsheath his anything knife. Then a voice spoke in the dark. Who are you? It was a boy who sounded only a little older than Esker and Flint. Two, two of us are fur tribe, Flint stammered. And then he paused and added hopefully, fur tribe warriors and need fire, Blue whimpered, cold toes. Another voice slithered out of nowhere, a girl this time, and her tone was frostier than the boys. They don't sound like warriors to me. I vote we let our arrows fly. I'm a wanderer, Esker said. Wolf Tooth's daughter. He came to you before the battle at Winterfang. Her words were met with a deathly hush. Then the girl's voice came again, and each word was coated in hate. You're not welcome here. Your father is the reason ours are gone. If he hadn't come and stirred up ideas of fighting the Ice Queen, maybe ours wouldn't have left the Netherflicks. She paused. You're the reason we lost our tribe. The boy spoke again. Easy, Brook. Remember the moon flit? It let them pass. But there were murmurs, murmurings now. Dozens of voices clamouring in the dark. Get her out. She's no right to be here. Esther's ears churned with the all too familiar sounds of a tribe turning against her. And she felt hopes she'd harboured on the journey through the nether cliffs lift slowly away. And then Rook's voice came, cool but loaded. We should kill her. Esker's pulse skittered and the voices grew into a knot of angry hisses. How dare she show her face? Our parents were gone because of her. She's probably working for the Ice Queen now. Esker shrank inside of her furs and from fleet feet Pebble whimpered. Was it to be like this everywhere she went? Walls of loathing that she couldn't break down. The voices rose louder still, the threats grew darker, and Balapan leapt back onto her shoulder. Esker felt the eagle's talons dig down into her bones. Then Balapan cried out, a sharp screech that echoed through the mountain. The voices fell silent. Lights, the boy in the darkness commanded. Bring up the lights. A scraping sound followed of metal striking stone. Then, one by one, lamps emerged on rocky ledges until finally a giant atrium came into view. Enormous dream catchers, studded with quartz and strung with snowy owl feathers, dangled from the roof while the cavern floor was scattered with loose feathers. Red ones striped with black, white ones dashed grey, large black ones, oval downy ones, and small electric blues. And there were branches too, fashioned into chairs and tables in among the feathers. It was like a giant nest. But even more extraordinary were the feather tribes themselves. The cavern walls were full of scoops and bulges, and inside every one was a large wooden birdcage, like the one Esker and her friends were trapped in. But the doors to these other cages were open. Crouched within were boys and girls, all with black hair and dark skin, and clad in wolf furs, with colourful feathers splayed out in a fan over their shoulders and chests. They were armed, each with an arrow poised on a bow, and everyone was pointing at Esker and her friends. You have a golden eagle! It was the boy they'd heard speak first, and he was standing in the biggest of the bird cages, one tucked into the middle of the far wall. He climbed down the ledges, his electric blue shoulder feathers glimmering in the candlelight. Before striding across the cavern floor, he stood before his prisoners, 
but his face was softer than Esther expected it to be. He only wants to ask about the frost, frost horn, she said quietly. Flint nodded. We don't mean any trouble. I had a dream that you would come, the boy said. A girl with a golden eagle asking about the songs we sing of the long forgotten frost horn. Esther lowered her bow, and with Balapan still perched on her shoulder, she gripped the bars of the cage. Yes, she breathed. Your songs, that's why we've come. She glanced down at Blue, and to find proper shelter for our friend, she fell in the lake, and the thunder ghosts nearly drowned her. There was a snort from behind the boy as a girl with narrow eyes and a fan of black feathers over her upper body slunk forward. Lies, Jay. Don't listen to her. No one could outwit the thunder ghosts now that the Ice Queen has them in her power. She paused. And there's something strange about her voice. I don't mind it. Esther recognised the girl as the one who had spoken with such malice a moment ago. And she knew that she had a choice. Back down, as she had done in the labyrinth, or stand up and try being brave. It's not lies, she said shakily. Flint rescued Blue from the lake with one of his inventions. The boy, Jay, frowned. Inventions? Flint blushed and then mumbled something into his chest, but Esther pressed on. Yes, when he said he was a warrior earlier, he meant to say that he's an inventor. Her voice was rough and gravely, gravelly, thanks to the Ice Queen's magic. But she gathered up her words nonetheless. One of the best that Erkenwald has ever seen. Flint slid a glance to Esker. You really are terrible at conversations. But Jay didn't wrinkle his nose or scoff at Esker's words. He just nodded, then looked at the girl beside him. There is something different about her voice, but I'm not sure what it is, and if it's something we should fear. He paused. And we could do with an inventor in times as dark as these. What do you think, Rook? Rook circled the cage, her eyes never leaving Esther's. Then she shrugged. Suit yourself. But you know what I think of your visions. Just because you dreamed of a moon flip protecting us, and one turned up just to show us the entrance to the Lost Chambers, doesn't mean that we should let an inventor, a wanderer, and... She looked down her nose at Blue, a snivelling little nobody into our tribe especially when they go banging on about the frost horn, which we all know doesn't exist. Flint raised his chin at Rook, his eyes hard, and Esther could feel the anger on Blue's behalf boiling inside him. She reached out a hand and held his arm. Not now, Flint. We need their help. Rook's words dripped on. They'll weaken the feather tribe, Jay. Jay. Mark my words. She sloped off into the shadows and Jay turned back to the prisoners. The moon flip trusted you earlier and that's enough for me, whatever Rook says. But before I tell you anything about us, I need to know how you found the lost chambers. When the Ice Queen and her guards failed to, he paused, prove that you're against the Ice Queen and her dark magic. And so Flint and Esther told Jay of their escape from Winterfang, of the sleigh chase through deep roots, of Whitefur's songs about the Sky Song and the Frost Horn, and finally about the Ice Spider who had helped them find the Lost Chambers. Jay nodded when Esther and Flint finished speaking. You're a true wanderer, Esther. Your bond with the Golden Eagle proves it, and I can sense the power in your voice, despite what the Ice Queen's been doing to it. Balapan's talons squeezed Esther's shoulder gently, and she felt a quiet sense of pride. My parents are the chief and chieftains of the Feather Tribe, Jay said, and though they're locked up in Winterfang, they told me to listen to my dreams. The gift every chief of the Feather Tribe is blessed with, and I'm listening to them now. He lowered his voice and looked straight at Esther. I want to help you. And those last five words cradled Esther in warmth because there was an opening now, 
a little space in this tribe for Esther and her friends. Jay took a key from his pocket and turned it in the birdcage lock. The door creaked open and Esther, Flint, Pebble, Blue and Palapan stepped out into the atrium. But from the shadows of an alcohol, a rook narrowed her eyes and turned a sharp white fang over in her hand. It was the one she had stepped on a few weeks ago while out in the open. The one that had caused her foot to turn black before she pulled it out. And the one that belonged undoubtedly to a cursed wolverine. And only one person had the power to hex wolverines.